it's like the worst Atlanta scam I have ever seen run because at least Atlanta scams make money. This is not the case here. They gave me a contract, which honestly was really cute. It looked like it was written up in paint. And that took a lot out of me because I'm, I graduated from law school twice. <laughs> and when they handed it to me, they were like, oh, you, we need this. It, they, there was so much seriousness there. And I was like, this holds nobody to anything. Like someone came to me and was like, as a tip, this place has problems with discrimination against people of color. You're talking to somebody that used to be the head of human resources. Me. And you're telling me this place has a problem with discrimination? And I'm supposed to be okay with that? that that's what happened. <laughs> long story long. <laughs> hello, hello? Is this, this, is this on? Hi. Should I sing? How, how did you get here? Out of tune, but it'll work. You want to be close? Is this ASMR? Okay. Now I'm bullshitting. I do have real tea for you, though. You ready to listen to it? Okay, let's do this. Should I back up? Hello. Okay. Uh, whatever. I mean, I mean, whatever. Like, like whatever. <laughs> Welcome back to this channel. It's your resident internet psychic medium and spiritual advisor, Mr. Crane. And today I've got tea, so let's spill it. First things first, I feel like a lot of you guys need an explanation. What the hell happened? I had, first of all, I was so excited because I had a whole calendar of things. I had did all of this preparation about how things were gonna run and like what was gonna be discussed in different classes and everything was reoccurring. I had a reoccurring class schedule with multiple classes set to run on a monthly basis. I was so excited about it. So much work and time and effort went towards this preparation. I even had input from my husband, from friends about how it was going to work. And I started telling you guys about it back in like November and then had to cancel all of the events in like one swoop and started doing and issuing a bunch of refunds. And I want to tell you like what happened because when I made that decision, it wasn't a decision that I made nightly. I actually like slept on it a lot of nights about like, what do I do? about this. I talked to my husband about it. I talked to my friendship and my friends about it. And I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to be, I don't want to like leave people disappointed. And the fact that like, I've been talking about it for so long and then I went and then canceled it. But then at the same time, I am disappointed in how everything is happening. And I would not be okay like knowing that these people paid their money, came to like the event, and then like let's say things start falling apart. Now, why would things fall apart? Well, here's the tea. So, I spoke to you guys about becoming a practitioner with the Phoenix and Dragon space, right? And prior to becoming a practitioner with them, and like by the way, the way that works, because I don't know like when you're watching this, right? But by the way, the way that works, you are like a self, you're self-employed. So it's not, you don't work for the space. You are running your own business out of the space. And so there's like an agreement that you're going to do X amount of days there, X amount of hours, but you can change your days and you can change your hours because you're running your own business out of that place. And you are paying like a rental fee essentially for the space. And the way you pay for it is through like a percentage so there's like an agreement where they make x percent of however like your readings or x percent of how many people come to like one of your events or your classes and that is how it's like paid for right and so for example let's say someone comes they see you for a reading they're paying the shop itself so like you'll go up to the cash register the till and you would like pay for it there 
And then the practitioners are supposed to, at least what I was told, get paid out like once a week. So all the money that came in that's earmarked for that particular person, it then will get deposited into like your account, your business account or whatever, once a week. Also, one of the things about being a practitioner is that like you go into a printed newsletter you have a sort of poster up with your face on it with what your events are. And so there's like little promo that happens on your behalf. Um, so when people are coming in in the shop, when they walk into the shop, your face should be one of the first things that they see upon entering the shop, right? Um, so it's supposed to be like worked out for you. If people want to come and they want to pay for one of your events in the shop, they're supposed to be able to pay for it at the cash register. Like there's there's like a partnership thing that's supposed to happen, right? Now hold that information because it's really important to know. Anyway, so when I get to the shop, I can already tell that like there's something here that's energetically off. I'm not totally thrilled about it, but my objective isn't to work for the shop. My objective is to run Mystic Crane, and this is one particular avenue that I think could potentially work. I also want to say that in the past, I have done events with that space that have run really, really well. I had support. I had uh, help. People showed up. You know, I've had, you know, I've had events there where people were asking if they can join the event and I actually had to say, I'm so sorry, but like I'm out of space. Like there's no more space here for me to be able to take or accommodate you, maybe come to the next event. So I've actually had really good turnout with them. And so going back into it, I'm like, okay, the energy is a little bit funky here, but like I didn't, it wasn't alarming because I had dealt with them previously in the past, right? I just knew that it was different. And so what I thought was that it was just probably like a new set of employees. And so maybe like the culture had shifted a little bit. So now that you have, this is that that is supporting information. I'm going to take you to the top. And you may want to pause this and go get yourself a beverage or some popcorn because I'm going to start spilling tea. Like to the, so much so to the point where I was like, wait, what was the actual agreement? And was there a confidentiality clause in it? <laughs> Like, I had to go back and read it because I was like, I'm about to start talking shit, right? About, like, this is fucking ridiculous. And the reason why I'm talking shit is because it impacts people. And there were many lines that were crossed. And not just with me, but with other individuals. The spiritual spaces, in my opinion, need to be held accountable. You cannot be selling spirituality and but not be practicing spirituality, right? But at the very beginning, when I went in, I was like, hey, do you have space for a practitioner? I would like to be a practitioner in this space. That's how it works. For any of you that was like, I would love to sort of work in a shop, but I don't really know how to go about it. Typically, what happens is that, is that you approach them and say, hey, do you have room for another practitioner? What's your process? Some places have a process. Some places don't, right? And so they were very much like, oh, yeah, sure. Come on by. Like, let's, like, we can talk or whatever. All right, cool. So I went. I came on by. And, um... It was kind of like an interview type thing, which was a little weird for me. I'm not going to really lie to you because I was like, come on now, a psychic interview? But like, sure, like whatever. I'll like, I'll play along. And then so like I went in and then the person that was interviewing me, right, when I tell you this is like where it started, like out the gate when I was like, this person should not like, where is, there is this, where's HR? Like this place needs an HR. And even though... That, like, because I work for South, right, in that area, because I do also have, like, muggle boots, like a muggle job, right? But, like, in spirituality, I, like, I work for myself. And I was thinking to myself, like, where is the HR? And even though independent contractors may, it's not really the same thing. Like, that place, when I tell you there needs to be an HR in that place, there needs to be an HR in that place. Because we're sitting there, and when I tell you there, there was no level of welcome here, I showed up. And I had to wait, right? There was like this definitely a feeling of like, I'm on that person's time. It was a kind of, I felt like, okay, well, this is like a little bit rude, right? And then they were like, okay, well, let's go into one of the psychic rooms to do the interview or whatever. And I was like, okay. And by psychic room, there are rooms that psychics use. The rooms that a psychic is sitting in, right, to do the reading is called a psychic room. We went to go do the interview. And then when I noticed was that the psychic 
or the practitioner that was using that room at that time got kicked out in a really unceremonious way. Like they straight up said to this person, and I'm saying like the they, the person that was interviewing me, right? Um, hey, I need this room. Can you get out? Like when I tell you, there was no like, uh, hey, do you mind? Like the, all the rooms are taken. I don't really have anywhere to go. It'll only be, it'll be really quick. It'll only take maybe 30 minutes. It was just like, I need this room. Can you get out? And then it was, this, you know, this used to be my room, but like, can you get out? And it was like, really, like I had secondhand embarrassment over like how that other person was being spoken to. And so the other person comes out of the room. They had to bag up all of their stuff because as a reader, all your stuff is laid out, all your cards, your crystals and all that type of stuff. So they were like, I hear them. I, I'm not looking in the room. I just hear them like shuffling, like trying to get themselves together to quickly get out. And this person is saying to them like, move. So the person comes out. I have secondhand embarrassment. I look at them. I give them like probably honestly, which was like a pity smile. And I was like, holy, I'm like, God, really? This is how they're talking to people? But like, okay, try not to pass judgment. You're not here for them. You're here for your own money. Like, whatever, you know. And, but I felt like that's like where it started. Then we go into the room, we sit, we sit down. And then, and then this person goes, well, what can you do? So I list what I, I can do, right? I said to psychic medium. Well, like, well, like, well, what kind of medium? And I was like, I don't know. Like the one that can see dead people, like, what do you mean? And then that turned into a conversation of like, well, you know, back in my day, I used to be like the head medium. And I was like, in my thinking, I was like, oh, okay. But I could tell that this person like wanted a kudos, like a pat on the back. Back in my day, I made X amount of money. And I'm not going to put their business out on the street, but it was like a six figure number. I made X amount of money because back in my day, I was really good. And they, when I tell you, it took everything in me to be like, that's all you made. <laughs> Like, like literally, I'm about to file taxes and the government's about to rob me blind. Like, that's it? <laughs> like, okay. And by the way, I made more than that with like a muggle job and you're telling me, yeah, yeah, you, you work really hard if you follow everything I tell you to do, which is what was said to me. These, these are the instructions. Um, you can get there. I believe you can get there because me, I'm trying to nurture the psychics. And it was like this ego speech. It was bizarre and it was weird. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, there is a difference between people who are like spiritual teachers, spiritual coaches, healers. That's not the same as someone that's like a psychic or like a medium. And so when you guys are going to go get readings from people, you have to be really mindful because you'll mess around and this person will start telling you, you've got a dark entity attached to you. And you're like, what the hell? I just came here for guidance. And it's because that person is not leading from that space. They're not trying, they're not healing, they're not facilitating the evolution and the growth of humanity. That's not what they're there to do. They don't really care about any of that. They're trying to figure out how much money can they rob you of and then move on with their life and go to dinner, right? And so I was in that space and I was like, oh my God, this is what this is? Like, because on the surface, like this is, I remember feeling like years ago when I did events there, it didn't feel like that. It felt like a healing, like nurturing kind of space or a space where you could go and find understanding. And then like now, and, by, and years ago, I'm talking like at this point, maybe four or five years ago. So in all fairness for them, four or five years is a long time to change things, right? And so, but like, it was a very, this person was, it was a very like, look at me kind of speech. And then, and then they said something along the lines of, and now like, because I was so good, I am now the CEO. And in my mind, I thought of a bookstore. Not that there's anything wrong with being the CEO of like a bookstore. If I ever opened a bookstore one day, I would technically be the CEO, right? Because I would be the president, the CEO, the founder, right? But, you know, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm uppity. I don't know. Maybe it's because I have worked for ambassadors and uh, government, top-level government officials that like some of you know the names of that for me, I'm like, mm you know, okay, <laughs> you know, may, I, I don't know, like, you know, I, I have been around, I've worked for, like, people with titles I can name drop like crazy, like, I know presidential people, right, so, like, like, of the United States, and so, for me, it's, like, okay, like, I, all right, like, okay, whatever, you know, and so, but I was, like, don't do that, because I had a, I had moments where I was like, I was, 
going to be, I, I was going from Mystic Rain to government name. And when I tell you, when she switches over to government name, this whole love and light, who, who is Mystic Rain? Who is she? I don't know who she is. So I was just like, just be cool in this space, you're Mystic Rain. But I wanted to be like, okay, home girl, like, <laughs> like you chill, you know what I mean? But and she, she was on this whole thing, and then she, she was like, well, look, you know, we really need a medium. We haven't had a medium in a really long time. That is what we're missing. And, you know, I'm in this space where I'm going to flip this place around. I'm going to turn this place around. This place used to be the top place in my heyday. I'm going to get it back up to that. We're going to make it the top place. And I was just thinking, like, okay. And um, and we really, really need a medium. You sure you, you can do that? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, if a dead person pops up, I'm sure I can relay a message. I don't really think it's that big of a deal, right? Um, and then she goes, okay, but just so you know, all of our mediums died. I'm going to let you sit with that for a minute. So I, thinking that I'm supposed to be professional in an interview, I'm like, oh. And this person goes, oh yeah, they all got cancered and they died. All of the mediums. Okay. So just so you know, that all the mediums in this space will get cancer. Okay, well, thank you for relaying that information to me. And then they went on to say, and I really, and I think the reason for that is because people didn't, they didn't cleanse themselves after. No one was doing spiritual baths after, right? They were a medium, they, they got cancer, nobody was, was releasing the energy, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Now for me, I'm like, one, I'm not taking on this level of fear mongering. This is weird. You're saying it from a perspective of, I'm like, I'm like, I'm warning you, but how much of a warning is that really? If you're still trying to bring a medium into the space when you are operating off of the idea that mediums get cancer and they die, but you're trying to invite mediums into this space for what exactly? To get cancer and then die? Like, I don't really understand where your goal is right now. But then also, too, I'm in this space realizing now that this is not a healing space. So you guys are just psychics and mediums, and there's nothing being done here to promote humanity's evolution at all. But then also, too, sometimes it's very possible for people to just be ill, right? Like, people can just be ill. That place has been around for like 30 years. People can just be ill. They get other things that are going on. I think it's really interesting that you're tying those two to, to those things. Are you saying that this place has attachments to it? Like, what are you actually trying to say? But then even with that narrative, you can say that this place has attachments, entity attachments to it. I'm having a hard time trying to understand how so many psychics can exist in one space and not one person burn a sage bundle that's being sold in the front of the store. You're trying to tell me that mediums get cancer and then they die, but nobody anywhere in point in time when that basket of sage over there that we're selling, let's light the whole damn thing on fire. What the hell is this? And what kind of conversation is this? Um, thank you for your input, but I'm not taking on your whatever this is that I'm brushing up against. This energy is, I'm not taking that. And you're not helping. And I know this is not it's impossible to help somebody in that way because if that because if it if something that you were saying was true, either a the place would have been shut down already, right? Because it would have been out in the press or something. I don't know, right? Or you would have had a kind enough heart to like not be doing what you're currently doing, right? Because what you're doing is actually wrong, and you giving out whatever you think this warning is is that is also really wrong. Because you're giving out a warning with no solution. You're giving out the warning and then being like, okay, so what days would you like to be here? Like, that's part of the evil in my op opinion. Like, that's no better than anything else. And so I'm like, okay, that's crazy, but like, whatever. Anyway, so after that whole thing, um, I was like, look, I'm there for my, mon my money. I don't really care what the rest of this is. And to be quite honest with you, there's not a whole lot going in, going on in this, this story anyway, because I feel like some people are like, well, Mr. Green, are there entities in there? From what I could tell when I was there, no. Actually, this, the, the place feels really sterile. 
really like there's not a whole lot in there at all actually um which is a little concerning because some i don't necessarily feel like there's a lot of protection work that's being done now if you're telling me it's like a shop and there's like sigils everywhere and there's like protection magic being done everywhere to prevent those kind of things from happening then like okay but like it didn't feel like any of that really existed it actually felt like a really sterile energetic environment and the readings that I did when I was there, or the times when the mediumship did come through for people, it really felt like those particular spirits were just temporarily visiting a location. And then after the reading was done, they left. But like, I very much was like, let me just have a look around, let me nose around, see what was in here. And I didn't actually see, sense, feel any spirit at all. It's actually really sterile. And I thought to myself, that's actually really interesting because this is supposed to be a, a place where they would come because you got people you would think getting readings and like they're not I don't, they're not there unless the ones that are there are so low that I can't perceive them you know I don't really know but when I tell you there there was there wasn't a whole lot that was going on there I was like okay so is this like a fear tactic or like whatever but fine then after deciding on the days um, I was then told that my days I go into the psychic room and then I never get up ever my, and, I, and it was very they were very they hammered in don't ever move from the chair don't ever get up they hammered that in and I was like that's a bit weird but like okay so you're telling me I'm supposed to like just sit in the chair for like eight hours and what if business is still it's like slow that day and I like want to get up and I want to roam around and it was just kind of like you do not move from this chair like do not get up right and so I will never forget, like, the first day I was in there, I was like, is it okay if I, like, go to the bathroom? And one of the people that worked there actually gave me, like, a weird look, like, duh, like, why wouldn't that be okay? But in my mind, I was like, well, I was told never to move. So, like, I don't know if this is okay, right? I'm just trying to respect whatever crazy establishment y'all think you got, y'all got going on here. But, like, okay, like, whatever, right? So that was an issue. Then there was another time, because I wasn't moving around, People started to notice that like I wasn't one of like you did that you didn't see me moving around and I thought it was weird because there was other practitioners in the psychics that would be there the same day I was they would be up moving around running around flitting around the store um, talking to people engaging with people and I would think to myself well why are they doing it when the rule is that we're not supposed to do that fast forward one of the people that worked there came in and 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 blessed them too because they they I mean they actually tried to give me like as much support as they could have possibly given me when I was there um and they were like you know you should like take up more space and I was like well, what does that mean and they were like you know let people see you take up space on the floor like you know work the floor a little bit you know and then I had advice from somebody else that was like yeah like you can help people when they're looking for things like if they're like where is the sage you can help them find it blah 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 and in my mind, I was like, that's an absolute hell no for me because it's not my job to work retail. That's not what I'm here for. But I also understood like the premise of what they were trying to say of like, let people see you. And I said, well, I hear that, but I was told not to get up from the chair. And then when I tell you, they were, like, there was this look of like, what? And I was like, I was told not to leave the room. And they were like, what are you talking about? And I was like, what are you talking about? I was, I just feel like I can't be as plain as like what I'm being. I was told not to leave the room, right? And they were like, well, that's not a thing. And I said, what do you mean? And they were like, well, don't you see like the other practitioners? Like they're up and you're out. And I was like, well, I know that. But I was told, and they were like, no, that's not a thing. And I was like, okay. And then they went, like, it, like, there was like a sigh. And I was like, oh shit. And they were like, all right, I'm just going to give you, like, I'm just going to tip you off. And the person that told me this, by the way, is white and they're like they're like i'm just gonna tip you off but like this place has had problems with like discrimination against black people and if you feel like you're being treated differently it's possible that you may be trying being treated differently and i was like you gotta be kidding me are you like you gotta be fucking kidding me okay i just thought you guys were nuts but if a white person is coming to me saying, look, I need you to know this, then that means there's a problem happening in here. And so this is what started the process of me trying to figure out whether or not I was actually going to cancel everything, cancel you guys, refund the money. So many of you guys are, are of color. I could not 
hold the responsibility of knowing that this place is an establishment that has issues with discrimination and then invite you to this place and then you go in there expecting to have a good time and then you're spending your money in this place and this place probably doesn't even want it or doesn't care to have it or that I cannot promise that when you walk in that you're going to be treated the way that you're supposed to be treated. There was one event that I did have in this space that was actually, it was really, so the whole thing was really annoying actually for me because it was supposed to be a candle magic event. And the initial problem with that was that from the start to finish, it was just wrong, right? So for there's like a due date of when you submit everything to make sure everything is up, advertised, and set up correctly for you, right? This is for practitioners or just people who want to hold an event in the space. You don't necessarily have to be a practitioner. The rule is the same. And you're supposed to have all of the information to them by a certain time in order for it to go in all the publication and everything like that. And it was submitted and it was submitted on time. It had been discussed about, there was a, there was a conversation, numerous email chains about it. And I noticed that everybody else had submitted their stuff. It all went up, it all went live, but mine didn't go live. So then I reached back out. Hey, I noticed it didn't go live. What's going on? Oh, no, no, no. We, we did it. We did it. We did it. Okay, but I don't see it. No, 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 no. We did it. We did it. We did it. Okay, but I don't see it. Oh, well, maybe it's just going to take some time to, up, to update. Okay. Some time passes by. I notice it's still not live. Hello? It's not live. The problem with it not being live is that I don't have, I don't know if I can push it, if I can advertise it, if I can market it. I don't know what to do with it because I don't have enough time. I don't have enough window, right? So then, like, the last minute, like, in the last minute, maybe, like, two weeks, right? The last minute, they were like, oh, by the way, we fixed it. So at this point, I'm thinking, fix what? I have moved on, right? Like, okay, well, I'm just not doing that event this month type thing. Oh, we fixed it. Fixed what? I go and I check, and there it is. It's now live. But it missed, because they took so long with mine, it didn't make any of the publications. It didn't make any of the marketing. So there are people who are being fully marketed, who are not practitioners in the space, who don't have a, a like a contract in place with the space, whose face is up when you first walk in, walk in. I'm a practitioner there, and none of it is available for me at all. Everything that's agreed upon that will be done is not done. It doesn't exist. Two, so I so they give me two weeks. Two weeks for me is not really enough time to push it. I think I mentioned it to you guys once and in my mind that was all that I was going to say about it because I was already frustrated that I didn't have the time that I felt like I needed to properly to prepare for it. It also wasn't being pushed locally and it wasn't in any of the publications. I was like no one is going to see it. It's going to be empty, right? Fast forward to the day of Right. It's so interesting because I remember waking up that, that morning and I was so sick when I woke up that morning to like the day of the event. But I was like, no, I have the commitment. I'm going to finish this through. But I remember being like, this is going to be some bullshit. Right. Got there. Sure enough, it was some bullshit. And I did meet one of you guys, though. So how are you doing, sweetie? I really enjoyed our time together. And you drove six hours from a different state to come, showed up because they didn't do their job. They didn't promote it. They didn't push it. The staff that was there didn't know that it was an event, which I don't really understand how that happens when there is a calendar, right? But they all were like, well, we have, we know nothing about it. Try to tell the person that showed up to go home when they had driven six hours. When I tell you it took everything in me not to go from Mr. Crane to government day, there was, there was so much wu sign and loving light. I was like, you cannot be talking to people in this kind of way. Like, as a practitioner, you have my number. Why is no one calling me? Why is the phone not ringing? What do you mean? You would rather tell this person that it doesn't exist when, it's, when it does exist, as opposed to admitting that y'all messed up. Like, y'all messed up. And so I had to really sit there and be like, one, this is supposed to be my business. And this is what you guys are doing. It's not a reflection on you. It's a reflection on me. And I cannot risk inviting other people to this place. God knows how many hours people are going to be willing to drive. And you tell them to go home because you fucked up. Like, that's just not okay with me. And then take that and pair it with everything people have been saying. 
the the fact that I don't feel like I was treated fairly, the fact that it was validated that other people of color have come in and had the same problems, the fact that I've seen you talk down to other practitioners, I was like, I I cannot in good faith with good conscious consciousness, like because y'all will go there and spend money. And 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 that's wrong. Like it would be wrong for me to allow you to go and spend your money there. It's wrong for me to allow you, even if you don't buy anything, even if you're just like paying for a spot in like one of my events, the fact that they get a cut of that, they get a percentage of that, that's wrong. Like, no. And then the one event that did happen, which wasn't, didn't even, wasn't able to fully turn into an event because all the crap that had popped off prior to that, they were, they said to me, well, we don't have a barcode. And I said, well, what does that even mean? Well, if somebody else comes in and they try to get a spot in your event, we can't bring that up. We, what the fuck does that mean? And then they, and then, and then I was asked, well, how would you like them to pay for it? Um, you guys are supposed to take 20% and you can't figure this out because if I have to come out, if, I, if I'm coming up with a payment solution, I'm going to tell you something, you're not getting the 20%. It's going directly routed into my account, and I'm not cutting you a piece of that either. Like, what the hell? On top of that, there was an issue with my photo didn't go up as one of the partitions. Everybody else did, but mine did. There were two practitioners that joined in January. One of them made the publication. One of them did not. Me. I didn't go. There was no level of advertising for me. None. Whatsoever. So it was really hard for me to be like, this is fine. Like, there's nothing wrong here. Like, all of it from, like, start to finish was, like, just, like, an absolute problem. I'm like, when did you guys actually, like, come into this? Nobody there has an answer for anything. Like, and it's not, it just wasn't helpful. It was a bunch of it was just a lot of, I don't stand or support or agree with any of this or like how any of you conduct business. The gossip in there is beyond crazy. The practitioners are in, the, in there are constantly competing with each other, which is weird for me. And the reason why I find that weird is because all practitioners are so different in the sense of the gifts are different. So people that may be drawn to me may not be drawn to you, but the people that are drawn to you will not be drawn to me because people are drawn to certain sets of gifts. Some people want an answer. They don't want healing. I'm going to force you to look at your shit. Not everybody is attracted to that. Not everybody wants to look at their shit today. They just want to know if Daryl is going to call them back. And I may say to you the truth, because I'm not sitting here trying to steal all your money. Will Daryl call me back? No, he's not calling you back. He's not doing it. I'm not going to sit there and lie to you and be like, oh, maybe in two weeks, come back later. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to do that to you. But then you've got people in there that are like dating people, hooking people, and then reeling them in and then trying to get them in. It's like it's like the worst Atlanta scam I have ever seen run because at least Atlanta scams make money. This is not the case here. You know, I was told in this, in my interview, don't tell anybody they have a dark attachment. And I was like, okay. And and they said it from the place of like, that was like their one value, their one moral that they were gonna stand on. Whereas for me, I think something like that should be like commonplace practice. So now I'm thinking, well, what the hell have you had walk through these doors? Who have you been letting in here that you feel like you need to share that with me so strongly? Then they gave me a contract, which honestly was really cute. It looked like it was written up in paint. And that took a lot out of me because I'm, I graduated from law school twice. <laughs> and when they handed it to me, they were like, oh, you, we need this. It, they, there was so much seriousness there. And I was like, this holds nobody to anything. Like, this is like, this is, did you even make this in Word? Like, it doesn't even look like you made it in Word. It looks like it, you printed it from Notepad. Like, I don't even understand what kind of business is this? Like, what's wrong? Oh, but okay. All right. Okay. I have other goals, dreams, and ambitions. And I understand that this is a kind of space where I, I use you a little bit, you use me a little bit in order to get to 
a, a certain outcome. I will sign your paint contract, no problem. But I thought it was some bullshit, okay? I really did. I really thought it was some bullshit. Everyone in, like, no one in there knows what's going on. And it's such an interesting thing because, in, in my opinion, when it comes to, like, Metro Atlanta in terms of, like, an institutionalized area, like, place, people in spirituality who have been in it for quite some time, they know of that place. Now, for, like, people who are, like, coming into it, they're new and they're just not trying to find areas and find stores and, like, find places that are, like, supporting their development, they may not know about it yet. But, like, people who are, like, established in spirituality, regardless of whether or not they shop there, they know that it exists. Like, it's a place where, like, from what I hear, celebrities have dropped by occasionally. Celebrities that, like, live in Atlanta because that is the institutionalized place here. And it was weird to go inside and, and like everyone's talking shit about it. Everyone's talking about, oh, this place is not, this place is going down. This place is like not, then people were quitting and like not telling anybody about it. Oh, by the way, I didn't get paid. So I was, I was there for like a month and didn't get paid like at all. And my plan was to just be like, I'm like, this is, I'm done. Because one thing about me, I don't fight over all money. And the reason why I don't fight over all money is because, like, not all money is good money. Not all money is worth it. That place is so crazy that, like, I just didn't feel like it was good money. Like, I really, like, I, I was just like, this is something that I, that needs, like, I'm just cutting my, this is, this is too much. Like, I'm cutting my ties with this. And I'm, like, not, I'm not wrapping my business up in whatever failing business this is because this is some bullshit, right? And so... I had uh, talked to somebody about it, and then one day something told me to check my account, and I did, and the money was there. I was like, that's weird. I went on the website, checked that, my face was on the website, because your face is supposed to go on the website. They didn't put my face up on the website. Everybody else was, was there, but mine wasn't there, right? And my face was on the website. All of a sudden, like, the, the promo existed, and I was like, I was in the publication. All of a sudden, my face, and then, and then one of my events was featured in the publication. All of a sudden it was boom, 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 Mr. Crane. And I was like, that's not good enough. That is not good enough for me. That's not enough for me to be like, oh, it's okay. No, because the fact that it had a whole month had to go by, a whole month had to go by. Somebody had to say something. And honestly, that person didn't say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said anything because my, my plan was just to just move on but like that's just not how it ended up working out so they had my face everywhere and the reason why I wasn't planning on saying anything is because I had a nice email drafted talking about leaving bye and so I wasn't going to say anything about it because I just wanted to be out I'm like this isn't this is too much and I don't really I can't even actually trust this good money anyway and to be quite honest I didn't make nearly as much as I thought I was actually going to make while being there because like I said in a video that I posted before I don't feel comfortable having my business tied up and, uh, and being surrounded by other people's money blocks. And I remember saying, I, I just, I still didn't know how I felt about it. So what I realized is that like, when you do that, money doesn't flow. So being in there and like, like the little bit of time that I was in there, I was like, this place, there's no money moving here at all. Nothing is happening. Nothing is moving. Matter of fact, I was like, I don't even know how y'all are paying your bills. Like what, like what's happening, right? And so I had a nice email wrapping up and it was actually very polite. I was like, look, I'm leaving the space. And then I was like, here are some reasons as to why I just don't feel comfortable um, mingling my business with this business. And I, I spoke about how one of you guys was told to go home when you had driven six hours. I talked about how like I hadn't been paid and, and all that type of stuff. And um, that was like two or three weeks ago. And nobody responded to me. Silence. Nothing. At all. And typically what will happen is that like, let's say you're running a little bit late. As a practitioner, you may get a phone call. Hey, you still coming in? Nothing. Not a phone call. Nothing. Just complete silence. And what that confirmed to me was that I made the right decision. Now, not knowing how you guys are going to respond to that, I, I had to move knowing that I could not, in good faith, invite you guys to a place where I knew that much about it. It 
was it turned into a place where I was like, this is this is it wasn't what I had originally experienced when I had worked with them in the past. It was a great experience when I had worked with them in the past, but that's just not what it is now. And so there was a period where I was like, okay, well, maybe I have enough time to try to find a new space. Maybe I'll have to cancel all these events. We just change the location, we change the venue. But then I thought to myself, no, I actually think I may have to sit and redo it because the energy is connected to the space. I may have to revamp or redesign it in order to refresh the energy that actually exists in those events. Because it was those those inner, those events were actually also created with what do I think would work well here um, based off of what I know about the space, like what can be integrated easily. And so the, the space was taken into account a lot. And because of what I know about it, I don't necessarily feel comfortable holding the same kind of events when they were created with the energy of the space. I think that it needs to just be completely redone. And so I, that was a decision that I had to make. And then that is when you guys started hearing from me and emails started going out. And um, I started issuing refunds for all of you guys that had had booked it because I was like, I'm not, I can't in good faith, I cannot send you there and then risk you being told to go home or being told something asinine or risk that you're like, hey, can somebody help me by explaining to me what this crystal means and nobody can help you. Because when I tell you, like nobody had the answer to anything. Like you, there was no way for myself or a customer to get the proper support that you needed. It just wasn't there. And so I was like, I cannot send these people there. I can't, like, I would feel, it was just too much. Like I had to process knowing that one of you were told to go home when you had driven six hours. I had, that was hard for me. Not only was that hard for me, I was really embarrassed by that. I had to, and even though I know I didn't do it, that's like not okay. There's still an affiliation. Like that's not at all okay. And the fact that I couldn't do anything about it, I was like, this, I, no, I can't. And I had, I went home. I spoke to my husband. I was like, can you believe this shit? And so, yeah. That's the story. <laughs> Y'all, you some bullshit. It was some bullshit. Like this was like, like someone came to me and was like, as a tip, this place has problems with discrimination against people of color. And you're talking to somebody that needs to be the head of human fucking resources. Me. And you're telling me this place has a problem with discrimination? And I'm supposed to be okay with that? Then they talk to me stupid too. It's really interesting because being in that space, like you could tell nobody knew anything about like what I did like in real life for like a living and then also me as Mr. Grant on YouTube it actually unfortunately wasn't until the end when somebody found out about it and it was because I'm just gonna say you because I'm not trying to put you out there uh the person that drove six hours you said it you were like <laughs> she's like the YouTuber like y'all don't know her <laughs> And it wasn't actually until after that moment that people were like, wait a minute, who, who was in here? Right. Um, um, like, and it's interesting because like, I'm, I wasn't actually the only social media practitioner that was there. There was another, there was a TikToker, a pretty good TikToker, TikToker too, that was a practitioner in the space. And they like knew nothing about what it was that she really did or like the size of her platform or like what she actually had an ability to build. And my thing is, like, y'all are just sitting on people. You are, I don't really understand how you're not making any money. You're just sitting on these people and you're like treating, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. I had one person, bless them, because I actually really did adore them. They were so cute. Um, when we were talking about the book that uh, I'm writing, and they were like, well, what about your contract? Did you get what you needed to get in your contract? And I was like, yeah, I think I actually, I got a good contract. And they were like, well, you know, I just took a class on contract law. I didn't have the heart to say to them, like, I graduated from law school twice. And like, in my jobs now, like, I read through a lot of contracts. <laughs> I think I get paid really well to do so. Like, <laughs> like, I didn't have the heart to be like, no, seriously, it's fine. Like, I'm usually my own legal representation. And not only am I usually my own legal representation, I also do it for family, too, whenever they're talking to me. You know, so it's like, 
So like, it was like things like that where I just remember going, I'm like, really, y'all have no idea who I am. And I hate to be that person. Like I was never that person that's like, you know who I am. But that was a space where I'm like, I'm a fucking gift. And like, what the heck? Like, are y'all fumbling me? Like, it was weird. It was weird. But what I will say, the spiritual lesson on the outside of that was people can't fumble you unless you choose to fumble yourself. And I had to very humbly accept that, like, you let this happen. Like, okay, cool. Like, you're in the process now of, like, sorting it out. And that's great. But, like, obviously there was a lesson in here for something to, to, for you to see. There was a mirror of yours that was here that needed to be dealt with. Right. There were a lot of beautiful things that came out of it, which was like growing comfort and like working with you guys like publicly. That was something that was a huge block for me, like me feeling like I need to have the wall of like the Internet in between us because if like I got scared. I could just like delete the account type thing. But like going through the process of like working with people like one on one and physically being with people, but then also being able to see the impact on people by me physically working with them, like that was incredibly satisfying. And that was also really a strong confirmation that like, okay, you are doing um, the right thing. And I also met some really cool people. Like there are people who work there that I'm actually very fond of. And I remember going, when I knew that I wasn't going, to, I wasn't going to go back, I remember being a little bit disappointed because I'm like genuinely fond of them. I, they're, they're sweet souls, you know, and they and they're the, they are the couple of people that tried to help me. And that was something that I really, really appreciate that I won't forget, right? But in terms of like personal values and principles and like feeling like people should not be treated a certain way or spoken to a certain way and knowing that I'm not okay inviting you guys to that space and putting you guys in a position where you're now at risk for having that same experience, like I had to, a decision to make, you know, and I said, no, I we're, we're not going to do it. Even though it's sex, I feel like I've been talking about it and it does suck because there's a level of embarrassment that comes with it. Right. Where you're like, Oh my God, I've been talking about this damn thing since like November. It's been like four fucking months. And like, now I got to go and I got to cancel it. Like, it's like, that's embarrassing. And, but like having to come over that too and be like, no, maybe it's not embarrassing. Maybe it was like a business decision. And maybe I just saved y'all too, a little bit of money and, um, a day of aggravation. Right. And so like that, 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 that dance, but that, that's what happened. <laughs> long story long. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to wrap. I'm going to wrap this video here. Anyway, if you like what you see, subscribe to this channel. And if we don't meet again, I'll see you next lifetime.